So once we attach many ubiquitin molecules onto a given protein, we ultimately target that protein for breakdown within the cell. But what exactly is the structure inside the cell that allows us to break down these proteins? Well, it's a structure known as the proteasome, and the proteasome is an ATP-driven multi-subunit complex that actually consists of two subunits or two units. So one of these units we call the 20S unit and the other unit we call the 19S unit. And actually, as we see in this particular diagram, we have two 19S units that flank the 20S subunit on both sides. Now, the 19S units, as we'll see in just a moment, are actually regulatory units. And it's the 20S unit that basically catalyzes the breakdown of the protein. Now, if we zoom in on this 20S unit, we basically find this structure here. So we have two types of subunits that make up this core structure. We have the alpha subunit and we have the beta subunit. So we have seven alpha subunits shown here and seven alpha subunits shown here. And in the middle, we have these two ring structures that each consist of seven beta subunits. So we see that we form four of these rings that struck that um, um, stack on top of one another. And when they stack on top of one another, they basically form this hollow cavity. And within that hollow cavity is where we have the catalytic activity of this core structure. So we form this barrel core and it's the barrel core that catalyzes the breakdown of protein. Now, what exactly are the function of these two 19S subunits? Well, it's the 19S subunits that essentially locates and binds to the polyubiquitinated protein. And once it locates it, it has ATPase activity that allows the 19S regulatory subunits to actually begin unfolding that protein. Why do we need to unfold the protein? Well, because we need to fit the protein into the 20S core. And so it's the 19S regulatory subunit that binds to the polyubiquitinated protein. It begins using ATP molecules to basically unfold that protein and insert that protein into the 20S core. And in the 20S core is where we begin to break down the protein into smaller peptides that consist of about seven to nine amino acids in length. And also what happens inside a 20S protein is we have an enzyme known as isopeptidase that begins to remove the ubiquitin molecules because the ubiquitin molecules are not broken down. Our cells reuse the ubiquitin molecules over and over and over. So we see that the proteasome consists of a core of 20S subunit and two 19S subunits positioned at both ends of this core. Now the 19S subunits are the regulatory units and the 20S are the catalytic subunit. So in a way you can imagine that the 20S subunit is like a garbage disposal. It basically churns and breaks down that protein into smaller peptides. While the 19S subunits basically bind to the polyubiquitinated protein and they protect other proteins from actually, in, from actually entering the core and being broken down. So if we look at the steps that involves this process, we can summarize the steps in this diagram. So let's suppose we have some protein shown here and this protein has been ubiquinated with these ubiquitin molecules. So we have five here, we have five here, and we have five here. So now that we marked this protein for degradation, the 19th S subunits, not shown here for simplification purposes, these basically locate and bind to this polyubiquitinated protein. And only then can the 19 S subunit begin to use its ATPase activity to basically unfold the protein and insert the protein into this core.
And inside this core, we'll find these catalytic units that basically have nucleophiles. And these nucleophiles attack the peptide bonds and begin to break down the protein into smaller peptides. Now this process continues until we form peptides that are about seven to nine amino acids in length. At that point, we begin to remove those ubiquitin molecules and eventually, once all that takes place, those peptides shown here are released along with our ubiquitin molecules. And these ubiquitin molecules, which are also proteins, are not actually broken down. So in step one, we ultimately see the 19S subunit recognizes the target protein because of the polyubiquitination that happens on those uh, on that target protein and binds to it and inserts it into the 20S core for degradation. Now, in that barrel core, we basically cleave the protein into small peptides and then we remove the ubiquitin and that ubiquitin is recycled and reused by the cell. Now, what is the fate of these peptides? Well, the peptides are basically broken down by cellular proteases into individual amino acid units. And then those amino acids are basically used for various processes and their fate depends on what the cell actually needs. If the cell needs to synthesize proteins or nucleotide bases, then we can use these amino acids for that. But if the cell needs to use the amino acids for energy, what it can do is it can remove the carbon skeleton it can remove that urea via the urea cycle and we'll talk about that in more detail and then the carbon skeleton can basically be used to generate energy as we'll talk about in more detail in a lecture to come. So we see that once we ubiquinate that particular protein, only then can the protein can actually bond to the special proteasome complex. So the proteasome complex consists of the 19S regulatory subunit that recognizes that target protein and prevents the other normal proteins that have not been ubiquinated from actually being broken down within this core. And it's the core, the 20S catalytic core, that actually catalyzes the breakdown of that protein into smaller peptides. And remember that the ubiquitin molecules themselves are not actually degraded. Our cells reuses and recycles these ubiquitin molecules. 